Hello everyone, I'm Rick Zanotti and welcome to Tech Down Over, that show which talks about tech. And joining me is our co-host, Jeff Lanchard, down in Australia. He's our Down Over guy and I'm the Up Over Here guy in Southern California, not far from Los Angeles. Hey Jeff. Hi, yes, we say Tech Down Over, but... Quite often we get involved in other things than tech. And like we said before, the pre-show was politics. So the, could, we could That's be talking right. about anything. Yeah, we could be anything could happen. But what's going to happen now is our intro. Here we go. And we oh, are back with our music track. And that's getting a high bit tech of here. guitar music too. Yes. Yeah, we got we got our little surf music. Got my Hawaiian shirt on. I am ready to go. <laughs> well, it's Jeff, amazing when you get some new new technology that we even as I said tech down over even just presenting the show was just showing you a bit of tech. This is our new controller. Oh, so we are controlling the show. The shots are down here on the bottom. The faders mm -hmm. control audio. And uh, at the top, we've got some music files and we're going to have some other stuff pretty soon, too. And I almost had a major accident. Oh, that's, here. Im <laughs> that's impressive. Does that replace just your normal, uh, your key? Yes. Thing where it just had normal straight buttons. So that's yes. very good because mm -hmm. you've got volume control. Yep. And it's good to have a physical volume control. It makes it much easier to, to, uh, to adjust. Yeah, so for the, example, the physical. here we go. So I'm going to play this again. And we're sitting here on the beach in Santa Monica. It's a strange looking beach. We've got a green screen behind us on the beach. And uh, we can bring the music up. <laughs> or we can bring it down very low. We can turn it and off. What a lot of people don't. What a lot of people don't realize we've been doing that before, but I could never hear that. But now right. I can. Right, none of us could hear it, but now <laughs> it's part of the show, and we know when it's on, and it's fun. So, <clears throat> so Jeff, lots of lots of tech to talk about today. Let's start with the uh, road, the video yes, micro. Well, <clears throat> well, I've been having a look around there and there's uh, nothing fantastic about a, a boom pole but Rhodes come out with a, a new boom pole that gets away from the telescopic type and just three sections carbon fiber sections screwed together but what what interests me there they've got one uh, a 10 foot one which weighs about 1.2 pounds hmm. but the, the the exciting thing was they've done the the macro version of it which is uh, about seven foot, seven and a half foot. Okay. And that weighs about, what's it, four and a half ounces or something it says. But the whole idea with that one is it's, you know how we see everybody's got selfie sticks these days. Mm -hmm. Well, now it's a selfie, a selfie boom pole because <laughs> you can hold, you can hold while you're interviewing somebody, you can hold that up over the top quite easily with the, some of the new, you know, you've got your new Rode microphone on the top of the camera. What was that called, Rick? You know, the, the, the video micro. Yeah, the yeah, you can connect them to it, so you can stick that in front of that uh, in front of somebody. And when it's only weighing that four and a half ounces, it makes it something that's quite possible for you to uh, yeah. uh, to hold on there. Now I and think we have that, a video should, of it. What, oh, pictures! <clears throat> we have pictures of it. What we're showing now is the there's there's a video mic, the video uh, the video micro, all as well. So that's sorry, I was talking in the in the wrong order, but the, we're showing that the microphone there. But that's one that's specifically designed as a smaller item that goes on to uh, uh, like an iPad when you connect it to an iPad for extra sound. Oh, so you can connect well, it to an or iPad. A DSLR. So it can go into an mm, iPad yes, though. Yes, you can. Nice. And it, I've seen I've seen putting it on uh, the head uh, like a, a phone mount as well, so it would go onto there mm. as, as well for the sound. Because I don't know about you, but that's the number one thing 
for yeah. me is quality of sound as uh, I've been seeing a few other people and they was doing things and they said, oh, how does my sound, how does it sound? And I said, horrible. Yeah. <laughs> I said, the videos, are, but it just always sounds, you just need a, no matter what it is, just a separate microphone because computers or your webcams just don't do you any, any service whatsoever. Now, you know, I, I looked I it up. How much I'm sorry. I looked it up on Amazon.com. It doesn't exist. Mm hmm I looked it up on B and H, and they have it for fifty nine dollars. So it's very oh, cheap. Is that, is that the? Mm, because that's the like video fairly, micro. And it looks like it's fairly new. It's uh, sort of was announced by the looks of it at IBC. You know the uh, mm -hmm. NAB of Europe. Right. And so that's where it was coming out because that's just happened. I think last week, I was trying to look for a lot of stories on there, but unlike NAB, there's not a a ton of uh, you know videos or different things uh, out right. of that but no and i think and i think any and i think ibc stands for right. i've been cheated so that's and what can you say <laughs> well w wait for we better come up with a different acronym for nab then so <laughs> let's see what that means so uh, but as, mm. as i said there's still tons and tons and tons of product out there but this one from road and as you and me we both like the road mm -hmm. product i don't think there's one the i think the only one that you dislike it's not the product itself it's not the quality of the sound it's actually the quality of the because it's made to be small lightweight light as a feather but it can break as easy as that mm -hmm. as well can't it sometimes with the just one the the headset mic yep but it said it, it does a perfect sound but it's just uh the way it's, it's designed i don't think it's a problem with road themselves it's just well when you make something that that light and uh, and that is going to break a, a lot of the times <clears throat> that's true now we have some other products here well one of, one of the things i was looking at during the week was uh, uh we had that conversation and i was as i said i was waiting for until you started looking at the uh the new camera, which was it? The the Sony A7 Mark II, was it? Oh, the there's the A7S Mark II, and there's also the A7R Mark II. Yeah. And so while he was talking about that, I thought, well, I'll just have a look at what you could get for things you've got. Then I came across a nice little lens you could put on your GH4. Did you see that one? Oh, that yes. That Sigma lens? You know, I was thinking... I that was just an... <laughs> <laughs> that that would make a great lens and a weight. Yes. Um, actually, let's show this. This is the Sigma. What's it called? <laughs> it's a Sigma something or other. This thing weighs what the core. 36 it's, pounds. It's, it's, <laughs> 36 pounds. And, and shall we talk about the price? Yeah, well, it's uh, twenty-six thousand dollars. Well, no, no, I'll tell a lie. Twenty-five thousand nine hundred and ninety-nine dollars. Wow. So uh, and that's that sounds US so much dollars, cheaper. But... <laughs> you, you know, for that kind of money, whole... it cooks. It makes love mm -hmm. to you. I mean, <laughs> that's a lot of money for a lens. <laughs> uh... It's the the sort of thing thing it just like it says on the ad on the ad for it or it said this is not a bazooka not a bazooka <laughs> it says not a bazooka because it does look just look if you put that on your shoulder you'd get arrested wouldn't you well that's what if clark he, said he, he said near, if you walk around somewhere they'll just bust you <laughs> you're done if if he was walking around there within that that lens rested and i could tell you that yeah. now. <laughs> it is it is so a it huge looks, lens but i mean 36 pound lens that's amazing. And that means you can't use your normal tripods. You have to get a heavier no. tripod because most of them only handle about 20 pounds. So mm. it's a, so you have a, now a 40 pound tripod to carry 36 pound lens. And you have this little teeny weeny GH four at the other end. Yeah. yeah. Or an iPhone. Or an iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to do that or put you know just or any phone put on the end of it and say, look at my new lens for, for my uh, phone. But then again, if I'm the sort of person who's got twenty six thousand dollars to splash out on a lens, yeah. what's another thousand dollars or two thousand dollars for a decent tripod to go with it? So Well no, it it comes with your own personal carrier, he or she model, and mm. they do every little work for you. 
Yes, but then yeah, it comes with its own intern, so that's what you know, to, mm -hmm. to carry it for. <laughs> But that's why not with that as well, I was uh, also looking at alternatives to uh, keep you from having to buy another camera. And then uh, I came across that the uh, the GH4 had a new firmware update that came out quite recently. Now, now is that out already? That is. That says it's out out already. There was a link on the, on a, the. Uh, I have to go to the link on that link. I yeah. sent you. There was one. Say, click here. There was to go and get the 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 firmware update. Yes. But it's got that that V log and V log one uh, picture style mode. But it's something you have to purchase as well, I believe. Ninety nine dollars so, uh, at B and H, but it is only available for pre order. I saw that. So that's not a, it's not out yet. But then again. No. It's better for ninety nine dollars to get a, a new li lease of life on your camera than a whole new camera. I think because it says it provides uh, well, increases twelve uh, stop dynamic range mm -hmm. for video capture. That's pretty amazing. So, uh, and they said this could be a much e cheaper option than uh, buying a, a new camera. Now, are there any rumors out where you are of new Panasonic models or updates to like a GH four or an FZ one thousand? No, haven't seen any, and that's where I, 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 built, I would think there probably wouldn't be any later because they're sort of pushing this firmware you see all mm. over the place. Yeah. And if there was a new model, they sort of would keep quiet about that because they would want people to think, oh, there's a new model, we'll just buy the, the new one. But it's sort of been a bit quiet in all sorts of cameras that don't mm -hmm. seem to be, they seem to just update slight features. Like I did see uh, a story on uh, the the C, what's it, C300, I think it was a Canon uh, yes. C300. 18,000. about that another week, but it's, but it's uh, getting a bit uh, more expensive for the mm -hmm. sort of the likes of things that we would like to speak about. Right, so. right. Now, Canon but I did still come out. That, I'm sorry. Yep, I was just saying with that one, that I didn't know what this meant on the GH4, but you having it might know. It says uh, with the new 2.3, it says allows time-lapse recording, pause and stopping with the press of the function one button. I wasn't right. too sure what that meant, but it's it must one of be those good because I mentioned it. It's one of those buttons out there. Function one, F one button. Let's see. So I wasn't too sure because when it says allows time lapse recording pause. So does Yeah, that so what mean, it does is I don't know as you're doing anything, you can hit that button and it automatically goes into a time lapse mode, which is nice. Oh, is that what it meant? So I thought, yeah. Oh, so that's mm -hmm. good. So it, on the yeah, fly so time it, lapse. That's cool. Oh, now, so that's. I, have I have the GH. Out. I have the GH four right here. So mm -hmm. I, this is Rick's rant. <laughs> now this is a GH four, sixteen hundred dollars, body only. It comes with an articulating screen. I can put it up, I can put it down, I can turn it around so I could see myself. Um, here, now you can see me too. Okay. Maybe. Yes, I can see where this is going. So you can see where that's going. So this is <laughs> a nice camera, a really nice camera. I can turn it on, and now you should be able to see me. So, so if I bring this out, you know, 1600 bucks, right? Mm -hmm. So now, you can see it there, or I can see myself. I can just watch that, and there's my shot. Okay? That wasn't, I, was, I can do a selfie in seconds. I can look down, I can look up at it, and you've got all the angles you could ever want. So, you also have touch screen, so I can change my focus just by touching it. Now, mm. 1600 bucks. I can do some of that same stuff on my Samsung <clears throat> Note 4. This takes, f Note 5, I'm sorry. This takes 4K video. This is the battery grip, 100 bucks. So I have here a very light, full camera in the palm of my hand for 1,600 bucks. Now the lens was, this one was about 600 bucks, and I have another lens for 900. I'm still cheaper than most of the big cameras out there. So I ask you, Sony, um, Canon, Nikon, what the hell are you doing? 
why don't you provide these kind of screens for very expensive cameras? I ask you, $2,500 for a Canon um, 5D Mark III? I don't believe it has a touch screen and I don't believe it has an articulating anything. 2,500 bucks, body only. <clears throat> and then you wonder why you're losing sales. Sony, $3,200 for an A7S that does mm. not have an articulating screen. How difficult is that? Look, it moves Sony. Wouldn't you like this, Sony? <laughs> You could have this with just a little effort. You could buy a Panasonic for $1,600, but no. You develop a $3,200 camera that does 4K a year and a half after this came out, but it doesn't have touch focus or anything else, and it doesn't have an articulating screen. I ask you, how cheap can you get? And this camera has a very nice little rotating dial. Now, the one you have on my other camera, which is this one, let me bring this one up here. This is my Sony Bridge camera, the RX10 Mark II. Mm -hmm. mm, this only articulates like this. Wow, whoopee. Can't go all the way up, so you can't get any selfies. Can't go past that. So that's about it. You can look down. That's really exciting. Useless. Now, $1,300. And you can't articulate this. I have a Canon 70D, which has a fully articulating mm. display. But Sony, and this little wheel is cheap. It feels cheap. Why can't you make something nicer? This costs $1,300. This costs $1,600. This is the most popular camera on earth. This isn't. So that's just my rant for the day. Why do we have mm. to pay so much for these cameras that lack such really normal, crucial features like <clears throat> an articulating screen? <laughs> But there must be, Rick. There must be. Uh, there must be something in those. Why they don't do that? Because I just don't understand why. Like I think you they're said, cheap. You've got your, your Canon six. It's Canon seventy D, and my old sixty mm -hmm. D has that. But mm -hmm. when you go up in their range, they, they stop doing it. I know. And to me, if I'm spending, if I'm spending four thousand dollars on a body of a camera, even if I don't use that articulating screen, I, like on the Canon, I don't re uh, use it a lot. I don't want to go back to it in six months' time and it's scratched to pieces. Because that's I've, the great thing with the, those screens. You can hide them and, and shut them away and mm -hmm. keep your camera in uh, top-notch condition. Right. And I, and I think the real but reason least, is laziness. Lazy manufacturing mm -hmm. process. There's no excuse. They'll well, tell did, you, well, those articulating arms could break and you could mm -hmm. fall and you could get hit by a truck and you could fall out of a plane. So what? Give us a real reason. They're I, pretty solid. And did, most photographers take care of their equipment. I did see one review on the Sony one that, that sort of suggested the reason why it flicks out is only to uh, dissipate the heat from the yes, camera. Yes, I've heard that. Not, not to be used, not um, to be used. But uh, okay, in, in that way, said, but, that said, here is a Panasonic GH4 again. Yes. A, which can yes, run a, until the battery dies in 4K mode and not generate any heat. Mm. <clears throat> mm. Um, Sony, yeah. you have heat problems. Mm. Canon, you can't even spell 4K. Mm. So uh, what's going on? Now, Canon did come out with a new camera. I think it's cute. I almost want to buy it, but I won't. It is the Canon EOS M3. It is a mirrorless camera. It looks cute. They have okay. a. They come in white and they come in black. Um, it's about six hundred dollars. Comes with a kit lens, six ninety seven with a kit lens. Um, I think they give you an eighteen to fifty four, something like that. Um, it does 
four frames a second. Ooh, that's just thrilling. <laughs> and I mean, okay, it's a cheaper camera, but I can do more frames per second on my phone. <clears throat> yeah, this has 18 true. megapixels and that M3 has 20 or maybe 24. Mm. Um, but it looks nice. But, but, but mm. we're getting to the stage though now, I think with cameras and all that, that uh, we're stopping to look at the, the, the specs on the cameras and mm -hmm. just say, look at the quality that you're getting because some yep. of the manufacturers are putting out 20 megapixels, 30 megapixels, yes. and some that's got 12 megapixels do a much better job. So I know it all depends on what behind, but that's what sells. It's like uh, we're saying now we, we might be having a go at say the Canon for not having the 4K on mm -hmm. some of their things, but let's face it, it's only people are only getting that because it, it it's the in thing to get a lot sure. of the time. So, but also sort of it does give you better video better quality, and it does it give does you more well, resolution, which is nice. Um, mm. I've got <clears throat> now, now most people are not professional photographers who <clears throat> shoot for National Geographic, so they don't need a forty-two or a fifty-four or a sixty megapixel camera. Mm. So, and and those cameras have beautiful color and resolution but that's for stills and people still want video cameras mm. and that's why the dslrs have become so popular so i'm a little torn mm. do i have a video camera or do i have a stills camera now the gh4 is only 16 megapixels so it's not high but it shoots very well and it has and you know with the center like d and with the vlog one and two you get some awful mm -hmm. awfully nice footage but now i see with that uh with that gh4 that's uh, taking over a lot where people used to use the 5d in video you're seeing a lot of that gh4 mm -hmm. because it's uh, such a good quality so it must do a, a good job the things are like with the panasonic as well that can be a cheaper camera but they don't have that cheap feel like right. even the fz 1000 for under a thousand dollars it's a cheap camera but it still feels nice and all the buttons seem to work that don't seem to be made cheap and plastic. They just seem to be, it seems to be a, a damn good product. And with the articulated screen, as you said. Yeah. Yeah. Now I wish the one flaw the FC 1000 had was not a touch screen. Mm, that's it. Yes. And once you've had a touch screen, you don't want to go back. Hmm. Well, luckily, I haven't had one yet. In the, well, I've got the Canon 60D, which doesn't have the touch screen. The FZ 1000 that doesn't have the touch screen. But then again, the HCX 1000 camera that does have the touch screen. I must right. admit, I do like that a lot to and, change and, settings on it. And it. And the next generation is going to touch you back. Oh, is it? So, oh, yes, that oh. should be very exciting. Yes, well, that's what we've got to do next, Rick, on the show. We've got to do a 3D version. So if I go like that, I'm pointing right at you. <laughs> so it comes out to get you. <laughs> well, if I, if, well, if, which way am I going? If I go, if I go that way, then I can get Clark to poke you in the ear and then it will look like I'm sticking the thing out. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we can do magic here. We can actually put a hand behind you. You know that. Oh, can you? Yes, <laughs> you can do that. And I can poke you. Doink, doink, doink. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> yes, <but laughs> anyway. So, so, so it's a so very interesting. Thing. Go ahead. And and as I said, with, with the cameras, going back onto the, the camera theme as well. So I was looking at, well, okay, I'm not going to spend any money on, on a new camera like that. So I've got myself looking at the what, a drone, one of those DJI Inspire uh -oh. one drones. But, uh, you know, at $5,000, uh. sort of the thing I'm not going to rush out and get now. But what they have also done, they've got a, had quite a, a good 4K camera that they supply with it on the bottom. But now they've got an accessory mount where you can take that camera off and put one of their new uh, micro four thirds cameras on that, which will do the 4K video again at 30 frames a second with the 16 megapixel photos. And it's got the 512 gigabyte SDD mm. removable yep. uh, device on it. But 
and the, to make a five thousand dollar drone even dearer do this and then it's another wow. two thousand two hundred dollars to put this camera and lens on it uh, so that's a lot of money so there's ones there with dual controls you can be up to about fourteen thousand dollars for <laughs> a drone and you can smash it into the ground in half seconds an hour. <laughs> seconds really <laughs> seconds and do that wow. but I just do we have any videos quite no videos okay and it's just quite um. incredible how uh, but even then for that for the price of that uh, we might be saying gee that's quite expensive but it is now we do have I want to talk about memory because a lot of people recommend SanDisk as the mm -hmm. best it's more expensive but I mm -hmm. have had very good luck with this one this is the transcend uh, 64 gigabyte oh, okay. SD XC this will run on the Sony RX 10 mark II, which requires a fast mm -hmm. card this runs okay. beautifully no issues I have had I have about 10 of these and no issues I've had three sand disks that have all broken or failed oh. in one way or another you know, I was at Sammy's recently and I told him, you know, you always want to sell me a SanDisk and I've had nothing but problems with those. Whereas I buy Transcend and he's looking at me like, Transcend? Uh, they work fine. Mm. <laughs> no issues. I haven't lost data. I've lost two video shoots on my SanDisks. That's bad. Oh. That's bad. And I don't know what it is, but they failed. Now those were the original earlier ones, but still only about three, four years ago. So I haven't bought them since. But even even then, if if uh, if anything fails, if if there's a chance of failing, well, I'm, I'd I'd rather pay sixty bucks a pop and have that fail than two hundred mm -hmm. and have exactly. the same risk of failure. Exactly. Because you know, it's not like you're protecting yourself. So if it's failing just as much as the cheaper ones, well, what's the point? Yeah. And that's what the and with I like with the uh, like even the XA10 camera. And he froze. X8 and the the one thousand uh, video. You can put the two memory cards in there and do the dual recording. So if one fails, you've got the backup. And and it's that's a good point because a lot of the more expensive cameras don't even come with two slots. I don't think mm. any of the Sony, maybe one Sony does, but most of them don't. Uh, the DH4 only has one slot. And and the excuse is, well, we give you an HDMI output, so you should carry another $1,000 recorder. <laughs> yeah, but, so that makes but it's it less so portable. That. It's, but that's the thing is, it's not the, the equipment. It's just, well, you've bought the GH4 because it's nice and compact. If I wanted, if I didn't need the compactability, I'll just get a rig with the with the ninja attached to it and i'll record uh, yeah. two ninjas and record twice as much oh if by the way they care about they, that if you've got a film crew they do have a new atomos assassin for about 1300 dollars, which will record 4k which is cheaper than the shogun at 2000. Mm. Okay. so it's called the, the atomos company, assassin yeah i love their names i was hearing them being interviewed and there was a they were saying, why do you always have your things, you know, the assassin and the ninja, all these, you know, violent attacking things. <laughs> there was a reason behind it, and I forget what it was now. But uh, Well, they have a Japanese fetish. To... It's just a Japanese samurai quite... fetish. That's all it is. <laughs> it was, uh, but I think what it was was uh, the fella, I might be wrong, I seem to remember this, the fella who developed it, he's an Australian, but he spent eight years in Japan when okay. he did that. And I think that's where he got that. <laughs> I'm from, telling so. you, it's a Japanese samurai fetish. And it's, it's just... <laughs> that's it. That's it. So, yeah. But Shogun, anyway, we, everybody assassin, knows it. Whenever they've seen now in, in the end, everybody says uh, ninja. They don't think of, uh, you know, the ninja. They think of the, the recorder. Right. <laughs> it's quite strange, isn't it, uh, that uh, something changes. Everybody thinks of the record. Well, anybody who's looking at tech thinks that anyway. So That's true. But, uh, That's true. This, I think they're good, but they're so expensive. So, Rick, do you think you'd ever get into, um, you know, the drone market and get yourself a, a drone or not? Not not right now. You know, we almost did. And it's like, uh, you know, here you'll probably get arrested for flying over the wrong place. So. 
I'm not that enthused. And I, I, I have a real hard time putting an expensive camera on something that a non-professional is flying. Yes. It's a little scary. And, you know, we still have power lines. You may go up. Oh, wait, wait. Don't go up. No doubt. Go down. <laughs> I just lost my Panasonic GH4. Hmm. <laughs> well, there was, uh, there was one I just saw on the DJI, and there was... Uh two flying it and one I think DJI did replace it for them so it was mm. uh, quite strange so on there I've just got on my screen if you I'll just show you my screen there a second but that's sort of the uh, the camera that will go onto the DJI the new one on there that, now who makes so that one hang on now the, who makes that one that's that's through DJI they do oh, okay. it themselves and then you can oh, put okay. different lenses on that so it's uh, uh, quite quite a different thing for them. So, so you can actually. So that well, has actually, replaceable, so that replaceable has lenses. Replaceable lenses. Yes, it does. Hmm. So I don't know what they've got out at the moment, but you know, I suppose it'd be limited because you've got a motor to uh, turn it up and down to when you're driving the thing. So you wouldn't be able to put two heavier things on that. But what they've all. Jeff froze on so us. got remote controls. Oh, it's got a remote focus controller on there, uh, so you can do manual focusing from that as well. So, hmm. but uh, hmm. quite good on there. But they've also did have uh, with that what I saw that I did like. You know, with the DJI uh, Inspire one, you've got their original camera. Well, there's also a little thing out there which uh, allows you to take that camera off there and put it put it on a handheld gimbal oh so interesting you can hook it up to your okay, phone so you, so, okay. you, so you can use that and control it when you're not using your drone so i thought well that's quite a good idea so you've got this really great camera on the drone but you're just limited to when you're flying with that as well i froze again have i a little bit no you're okay I'm back at, uh, on that, but I thought so that's uh, quite an interesting uh, little item on there as well to get for that. So, but anyway, with uh, the looking in Australia for that uh, Inspire one, it's about seven thousand seven hundred and ninety-nine dollars. So. Wow, hmm. huh? That's not too bad. <laughs> not for, <laughs> but not not very not very cheap. It's uh, for. I wouldn't mind getting one, but it's just like, would I buy a video? Would I buy the camera for that much and throw it up in the air no, and let it hit no. the ground no, mm -mm. <laughs> no. well jeff it, you, so. you hear that music yeah that, that says coming to the we're end. done our time is up so that's our that's our little notifier elvis, now elvis and all, all yeah. the beach movies it's surf you know? it's all our surf beach music mm. <laughs> well jeff as always it's been a pleasure and I know soon we're going to be buying new equipment one of these days. Yes. So I'm waiting for that. I'm going to see what you buy next. You're always sneaking some little things up there. So I want to make, well, want to I'll, see I'll, what, what you're uh, buying. There's something I'm looking at, something I want to buy now. I don't need it, but it's, uh, I'm just looking at something. So I might buy it and just, anyway, $250, I think, or $300. So it's next to nothing when you do it against $7,000. Right, right. <laughs> so we'll look forward to what you're going to get and by the way we were talking earlier about expensive cameras versus mid-range it's a little bit like microphones the mid-range mics are just about as good as any mic you could ever want or buy it's just that you can buy more expensive ones will you see a difference maybe maybe not mm -hmm. same thing well Jeff but then again, you have mic, it's all different it is yeah it's true That's, and the that mic that depends, fits depends what, and it depends what you're using it for like well i've got three or four and i thought why would i ever need them but the, i've mm -hmm. used them all in different situations they're all quite yeah. handy to have that's true and what you've what you have to get into is the uh sennheiser mkh 416 now you'll love that one oh. but you may also you may also love the uh the rode ntg3 very good voiceover mics, mm -hmm. but that's for another yeah, day. Yeah, the one you, the, the NTG3S, I do like that one. I it's think nice. I have had a very go basic. with that one. 
Yeah, it's very bassy, but it sounds yeah. good. Because the, 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 the normal to the boom mic, that does quite a bassy one. This one's even a better one, I think, the NTG3. Yeah. There's the music right. still going, so. Yep, the music is going, and we're going to be going too. So for all you people it's... in the chat, no, we have no chat room. For all you people on YouTube, no. please subscribe and leave us some feedback, comments. What do you think? Any arguments, any discussions? You agree totally with what we say? We would understand that. Um, but if you don't, that's okay too. So anyway, we will see you next week on Tech Down Over. Mm -hmm. From the LA side, bye-bye. Okay. And from the Australian side, yeah, bye for now. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.